Yo, what is up you guys and welcome to another video. My name is Benji and this is week number 27 of investing with the Robinhood app. This right here is my dividend stock portfolio that's currently valued at just over $69,000 as of right now. Uh, we're still in market trading hours, so the number will continue to move around. That's why it's moving around. My portfolio is made up of around 70 to maybe 75 different companies that all have a few things in common. They all are dividend stocks, which means they pay out dividends to me uh, as a shareholder every single quarter or every single month, depending on the stock's dividend payouts frequency. These companies also, in my opinion, have a good chance of going up in price, appreciating in price over the long term. I'm looking to hold on to this portfolio and I'm looking to hold on to these stocks and just accumulate more and more stocks in this portfolio for a long time. I'm currently 27 years old and I'm looking to have this portfolio be a pretty long-term outlook portfolio uh, that I can use later on in my life to if I want to sell shares of different companies once they appreciate hopefully in the long term. I can use and I can sell shares for my retirement or really just for whatever I want to use the money for hopefully long long in the future. In today's video we're going to take a look at where the portfolio is sitting as always. We're going to take a look at the overall stock market what's going on as of today. I also want to show you guys all the new stocks that I did purchase as of today. We're going to take a quick peek at all the dividends that are being paid out to me in this portfolio. We're going to open up the free stocks and we're also going to go over some viewer comments and questions as always. So for starters, as of right now, the portfolio is sitting at $69,359.39 as of today. The market has really been all over the place today, but just less than an hour right now from the session close, uh, the market has been selling off a little bit. So I have squeezed a few more stocks and I grabbed a few more things before uh, just making this video as of now. For the last week, the portfolio is down $2,323, just over 3%. For the last month, the portfolio is up $9,383.14, up just over 15%. For the last three months, the portfolio is down $16,957, almost down 20% for the last three months. And then for the last year all time, I started this portfolio just around 27 weeks ago. So just around half of a year ago, I started this portfolio. All together, all in as of right now, we are down in value just over $15,500 or 18.29%. So most likely part of the market sell-off was due to what happened with crude oil. Uh, just around an hour ago, crude oil started to really crash. And as you guys can see here, just before it closed, crude oil is now trading at negative $22.49. I think it closed at around like negative $35. So that means that in theory, uh, these companies would be paying you to take the oil from them. After doing some quick research, listening to some analysts and them talking about what this means, uh, what's really going on here, uh, it's kind of unknown right now because this has like, this is kind of like breaking news right now as of right this moment. Uh, like I said, it just happened like a matter of a few minutes ago. Um, but a lot of people are saying it could be due to obviously the oversupply and the loss of demand due to the entire shutdown still. Others are saying that it could be some sort of glitch in the system, like some sort of flash crash. Either way, I thought it was interesting enough to add in this video. I mean, it's not really dividend related at all, but I thought it was pretty crazy to watch the price of crude oil go into the negatives uh, quite significantly. I mean, as you guys know, we're used to seeing crude oil trade around 50 to $60 per barrel. That's kind of the normal price that's been hovering around for a while now, but seen it drop off as of recently because of the oil trade war um, and oversupply issues and of course the loss of demand due to this whole uh, lockup situation. People aren't really moving around, no one's really traveling, etc. cetera. Uh, everything's happened kind of at once and I don't really know, I mean, I'm not an expert on what, why this is happening or such, but I thought it was pretty interesting. What are your guys' takes on oil? Could this be a good time to invest in companies that are in the oil sector, especially companies that pay dividends like Chevron and ExxonMobil? two companies out of a few more that I'm currently invested into. Obviously, a lot of the oil companies are going to be trading at quite a discount right now. Uh, the question is, in three, five, ten years, especially with the outlook that I have for my portfolio, would it be a good idea to go headfirst into the fire and get some shares of some of these distressed companies and hoping that long term the demand will rebuild for oil um, you know, throughout the world, throughout the U.S., and the stocks could go up in price quite significantly. What are your guys' thoughts on that? All right, so next, you guys, let's go over some of the companies that I did buy as of today. They were all, again, just dollar cost averaging. I already own shares of all these different companies, and I'm just dollar cost averaging because the prices were down today as the market was a pretty overall red day. So for starters, I did grab two more shares of JP Morgan at $90.79 a piece. Next, I bought one more share of 3M at $145.17. Then I bought one more share of Dominion Energy at $81.19. Then I bought five more shares of one of my favorites, Realty Income, at $51.81 per share. Next, I grabbed a few more shares of AT&T at $31.17 a piece. Then I grabbed one more share of Altria at $40.07. And then finally, I grabbed two more shares of Coca-Cola at $47.61. 
A fun milestone that I want to share with you guys. As of today, I officially have 150 shares of AT&T under my holding in this portfolio. So that's pretty exciting. I'm really excited to get that number up higher and higher. Next, you guys, let's take a quick look at all the dividends that are currently pending. These will all be paid out to me as of shortly. Uh, there are a few new ones on this list as of uh, from the last video. So take a look here, you guys. These are all the dividends that are being paid out to me as of shortly. Then underneath here, these ones were all paid out to me just as of recently, a few days ago. And next, let's open up the free stocks I did receive from a few of you guys that were nice enough to use my link. If you guys aren't already signed up for the Robinhood app, that's the brokerage where I buy all these dividend stocks. You guys can go in my description on any of my videos and click right here. Sign up for the Robinhood app with my link and receive a free stock. If you guys sign up through my link, you'll receive a free stock and then so will I. And whenever I do receive a free stock, I always open them up on video for you guys. So it's kind of exciting just to look and see what we got together. All right, so the first one today was from Jason S. Thank you so much, Jason, for using my link and signing up for the Robinhood app. Let's see what we got here. All right, so we received one share of Plug Power, valued currently at $4.41. And the next one is from Rosa N. Thank you so much, Rosa, for using my link for signing up for the app. All right, let's see what we got here. And yet another Plug Power for $4.41, so not too bad. And now let's get to some viewer questions and comments. If you guys do have any questions or comments about anything, make sure to leave them down below. I try to pick a few of them and talk about them on every single video. So make sure to comment any questions or comments down below about this portfolio, my businesses that I run, etc. It could be really about anything. So the first one is from Paul. Are you gonna go into swing or day trades? Would be nice to follow. So that's a really good question, Paul. And honestly, it's something that I did think a lot about with the amount of money that's in this portfolio and with the amount of money that I currently have sort of set aside for investing, I have thought about getting into some sort of swing trading and or day trading. I sort of always go back to the same exact premise is that I'm really trying to run my businesses that I have currently as like my income. And I'm really trying to run this dividend investing portfolio as passively as possible. I really enjoy investing in the stock market and I do like the idea of swing trading and or day trading even but for me right now I'm pretty busy running my businesses and that's what generates me my income so to speak and this is sort of just like my cushion that kind of sits behind the boat if you will and kind of follows me along and sort of multiplies over time and I'm looking to hopefully at some point have this be the majority of my income which would be awesome which that's what we're trying to you know aim for over this next year we're trying to put in as much money as we can in this portfolio and keep growing it as fast as possible I have thought about it definitely I really haven't thought about day trading too much but swing trading such as like buying a dividend stock that I do have my eyes on uh, say buy a hundred shares of it and if it does go up five dollars per share sell them the next day and make 500 bucks I mean there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that really but but I go back and question the thought that if I do get in on a stock at a low amount that does pay a dividend I'd rather just hold on to it for a long time and get a higher dividend yield for you know every dollar that I have invested into it rather than kind of selling out of it and making the quick cash so I don't know I have thought about it what's your guys' thoughts on swing or day trading all right, and the next question is from Richard. What if we go into the next recession? So Richard, that's a good question. That's something that anyone that invests should obviously think about, especially during the current market situations that we're all dealing with right now uh, in the stock market and the economy in general, obviously. Um, if we do go into the next recession, um, I will continue to hold on to all my holdings and I will personally just keep buying more and more shares of the companies that I want to hold on to for the next, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. When it comes to buying stocks in the market, uh, for someone like me that is a long-term investor, uh, there's a lot of fear that kind of goes up the window because I do have such a long-term outlook. If I was looking to cash out of this portfolio in the next year, two years, three years, then or even five years, really, I mean, then a recession could really mess up this entire portfolio. But since I'm looking to just stack as many different shares of as many different companies that I believe will go up in price long term and that will pay me dividends along the way, there's not all that much risk. Of course, there's still risk. Every single type of investment comes with some sort of risk, most likely. Um, but there's not as much risk because I have such a long term outlook. And that's what really got me into dividend investing, because I'm not that much of a risky guy. I'm not really a gambler. Uh, you know, a lot of my friends always urge me to day trade and, you know, do things that can make me a lot more money and tell me, oh, if I had 70 or $80,000 in a portfolio, I could double that in a year, etc. People always love to say that. But honestly, for me, I'm looking to be slow and steady. And I'm looking to win in the long term. I do currently run businesses that I'm, you know, spending money on putting money into and hopefully making profit every single day. But as far as an economic downturn, like a recession or depression, I'm going to just continue to buy stocks. I'm only 27 years old. So if this portfolio doubles or triples by the time I'm 50, I'd be really, really excited by that. And I'm hopefully thinking that it can even do more than that. Hopefully we can have, you know, 5x, 10x in the next, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, et cetera. 
The next one is from Gaston. I feel good to see my dividend stocks are not in the list of companies will cut or suspend dividends. So Gaston's referring to in my last video, I posted a screenshot, I think, of all the different companies that just announced that they're suspending or cutting their dividends. And I totally agree with this one. It feels really good seeing the lists that have been coming out as of recently and just crossing your fingers as you scroll through the list and hopefully have none or as close to none as possible of the companies on the list that are cutting or suspending the dividend. But at the end of the day, like I touched on in the last video, if these companies do cut the dividend short term, hopefully it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, a lot of people like to rag on dividend investing because what if the dividends get cut, then what, et cetera, like I've talked about in previous videos, but in general, you just have to hope for the best. There's a lot of market turmoil that's going on right now. The economy is completely shut down still for the most part. And we have to just weather the storm and come out the other side, uh, you know, with a brighter future. Next one is from Deese Does Investing. Fantastic portfolio. Looking forward to seeing you break the 100K milestone. Yes, I'm super excited to reach 100K in value in this portfolio. That's going to be a super cool milestone. Hopefully we can hit it here in the next few months. I am going to be adding more money more aggressively into the portfolio as of soon here. I just did make a few transfers, so we'll really get going on it. We really want to get this portfolio up as fast as possible, honestly, uh, within reason, within being smart, of course, not just trying to throw money at the wall, of course, but I'm trying to get this portfolio going as fast as possible because the faster I get it up, the faster I can start making money on my money. All right, you guys, and the last one today is from Matt. Hey, Benji, quick question. I'm sitting at just around 6K in Robinhood, but could definitely put more in if I wanted to from my bank. How much would you recommend keeping in the stock market compared to your bank account? 50, 50, 60, 40. I'm curious. Thanks. Yo, Matt, that's a really good question. That's something that I've struggled with uh, to find the answer to, honestly, since I started this. A lot of people have a lot of different opinions. You'll hear like seasoned investors talking about having a lot of their net worth in the stock market. Um, or just investments in general. When it comes to trying to answer a question like this, uh, obviously it's person by person. It has to do with your risk tolerance. And all I can do is explain to you guys what my risk tolerance is, because that's all I really know, you know, for certain. And my risk tolerance is very, very low. I really don't feel comfortable sleeping at night knowing that a lot of my money is all sitting in all these different companies. I like to be sitting on a good amount of cash at any time just because you do never know what's going to happen in the future. And I just feel better that way. We've all heard the same before. Scared money doesn't make any money. And honestly, I've fell into that quite a bit in the past. Um, not really putting all my money to work and not really understanding how to put my money to work. And in doing so, missing out on a bunch of returns, a bunch of gains from the money that I could have been making off my money. Now, for me personally, this probably comes from the fact that I grew up with very little money. Uh, you know, we scraped by with what we could, but I didn't really have any extra money for, you know, really anything at a lot of times. So for me now at 27 years old, having a decent amount of money, uh, relatively speaking, a, a decent amount of money, in my opinion, for sure. I am much more scared and skeptical on where I want to put the money. Um, but this year, as you guys have been watching through this process, through this journey, I am trying to get the money to work. But for me personally, for my net worth, I would never really want to have much more than 10% of my overall money invested into the stock markets. Um, again, that's a very low percentage that a lot of people would probably tell you. But but for me personally, I'd probably never want to have more than 10 to 20% invested in the stock market for me personally. And that's just as of right now, as time goes on, I'm sure that will shift around, that will change around. But as of right now, I'm just starting off. Um, and I'm going to just slowly, slowly add money in from my overall money um, as we move forward here. That is going to do it for today's video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update of what's going on, show you guys all the new stocks I purchased, etc. Make sure to leave any questions and comments down below, and I'll answer them in the next video. If you guys did like this video, please, please slap a like on this video. It really helps the channel. Make sure to subscribe if you guys.